Good evening. Welcome to St. Michael Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The Women's Faith Group will be hosting an artistic tour of the church on Tuesday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. All are invited. See the bulletin for details. Registration is now open for religious education classes for the 2024-25 school year. Make sure to register before June 1st to receive the early registration discount. See the bulletin or call the Religious Education Office for more details. You will find hymns, prayers, and readings listed within the worship sheet. Our processional hymn is number 513, They Disbelieved for Joy, number 513. this beautiful day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all with your spirit. they disbelieved for joy they could not believe what they were seeing as a matter of fact they thought it was a ghost today we have Luke's version of what we heard exactly last week only quite a bit different in many different ways and so we open up our hearts to to realize that the Christ is risen from the dead because he lives, so shall we. We come to open our hearts to receive the grace of God and we shall not be denied. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. You alone are the 
us pray. O may your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the bodily resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's possession, presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you 
so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not with them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were stay incredulous for for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was stay with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord.
Do you ever wonder what makes Christianity unique? But why, why are we different from other religions, including the one from which we sprouted from Judaism? You know, the name religion, the word religion means, comes from the word re, religio, which means to, to bind up, to, to put together. And, and, and what we as human beings are always trying to put together is ourselves with God. God is out there, utterly transcendent. We are down here and somehow we are trying to get to God. And every religion has that in common, including, including Judaism. God is out there and so we have to somehow make some kind of a sacrifice to please this all-powerful God who makes the sun to rise and the, and, 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 and the seas to, to come up this far and no further. So how do we please this God? How do we get to this God? What are the rules we've got to follow? And of course, the Jews are convinced that they've had the best set of rules. As a matter of fact, they call themselves the chosen people. And they are the chosen people. Uh, they, they are the ones who believe that, well, God chose them. Of course, the prophets tell them. God chose them not because they're better than other people, but because God has made a covenant with them and he loves them in a special way. Yet if you read the Psalms, you always, you always somehow get this sense that, no, they are a little bit better. They're always smiting their enemies, the Jebusites and the... Uh, uh, the, the Philistines and all, all the other different religious people, they, they are a little bit higher and a little bit better. But they're always, and they are faithful to the covenant and they are faithful to the rules because they are trying to get to God until they're not faithful anymore. Christianity is very, very different. For the very, very first time, well... You know, there's an old couplet that was written by a Catholic apologist named Hilaire Balak. And he, he wrote this kind of very famous couplet in kind of tongue-in-cheek, and it, and it talks about the chosenness of the Jewish people. He says, How odd of God to choose the Jews. Why are they so special? And why did God choose them among all the other peoples? We, on the other hand, are quite different. And here's what separates us. And I think it's, a, it's something that we really need to pay kind of close attention to because I think it makes all the difference in the world. We are not dancing our dance to get to God. We are not following the rules to make God happy with us. We are not trying to gain brownie points with the Lord. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. And what's so amazing about, about our faith, about this Christian faith that we profess, is that we are not working hard to go up to God, but God comes down to us. This is the incredible great mystery. St. John in his prologue puts it this way, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and in the fullness of time the Word came down and took on flesh. Here's the mystery. The divine, the invisible, the almighty, the powerful God now is incarnated in a human being. Uh, St. Paul puts it in his letter to the Philippians like this. Though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and was, made, was known to be of human estate. He became one of us. Now this is utterly key. If we're going to understand what our faith is all about, I think this is absolutely imperative. It's called uh, the Incarnation. I must confess, till I was about 20 years old, I was convinced that Incarnation had something to do with evaporated milk, but it, it's more than that. <laughs> the Incarnation means incarnate. The divine, the invisible, the all-powerful God is now in human flesh, and we believe in Jesus fully human and fully divine at exactly the same time. This is not too sacrilegious, but I can remember when I was in college, I received a Christmas card, and it was a play on the Hilaire Balak thing about how odd of God. It says, how odd of God to have a bod. And then you opened up on the inside and said, ah, but nice. 
How odd of God to take on our human flesh, to become one with us. What makes Christianity absolutely unique is this great belief is that God dwells in matter, in the material world. Uh, I think this is critical. As a matter of fact, I think this is absolutely key. We have just finished celebrating the resurrection, but I really believe, and it was St. Francis who told us, pay attention to the incarnation, because what this does now is that not keep the world separate from God, but God constantly in the world. The divine spirit dwelling in each and every one of us. For years now, at least for the last 50 years, we've been hearing an awful lot about what is called the, the, the mind-body-spirit connection. That somehow the mind and the body and the spirit are all somehow connected. Now they are kind of religio, bound together with some kind of divine twine. But the older I get, I'm beginning to believe that, that they're not just connected, that body, mind, and spirit are, are, are one piece. It's only one reality. And it's got different manifestations, but but it's only one great reality. Now, this is not a real new idea. I mean, it goes way back to the Greeks. It goes back to the Romans. As a matter of fact, on the Roman gymnasium, you used to see a sign that would say, Asana mens corpore sano. Healthy mind, healthy body. Healthy body, healthy mind. Uh, if, if, if your mind is healthy, if you are seeing reality as it beautifully can be and is, your body's going to respond. You wake up in the morning and you're thinking, life is beautiful, life is good, your body's going to respond. And the spirit is connected to that. We can add healthy mind, healthy body, and of course, we need to have a healthy spirit. Now, here's the thing. And this is what's so powerful. We're not pure spirit. We're not pure spirit. We are embodied spirits. There's a wonderful story about a little boy who's going to bed, and I, I always tell it to the second graders as they're preparing for Holy Communion, as they're preparing for the sacrament, the material sign that points to something that is deeply and profoundly spiritual. And he says, Mommy, Mommy, give me a glass of water. Mommy gives him a glass of water. And she starts to walk. She says, Mommy, Mommy, mommy tell, tell me a bedtime story. And she comes back and she tells him a bedtime story. He goes, Mommy, Mommy, I'm scared. I don't want to be alone. Stay here with me. And she says, you don't have to worry. You're not alone. God is here with you. And the little boy says, I know, Mommy, but I want somebody with some skin. I want to touch. I want to feel. I want to know that this is real. We are in fleshed spirits, but we're not pure flesh alone. We're not pure material alone. We are not separated from the spirit. I know you probably all heard the very famous German story that I also tell the second graders that after the Second World War there was an orphanage and in the orphanage there was a terrible thing going on because on the first floor of the orphanage the babies were dying. On the second floor of the orphanage the babies were as healthy as can be. They could not understand why and they would, they would check everything out and everything was exactly the same. They were treated the same. They were fed the same. They were put to bed the same. And one night one doctor couldn't couldn't stand anymore, so he stayed up all night long to see what was going on in the middle of the night. He came down to the basement, and in the first floor, the cleaning lady was as clean as can be. Those beds and bassinets were absolutely immaculate. The babies were dying. He went up to the second floor. It was clean, but it certainly wasn't immaculate. But here's what was going on on the second floor. As the fräulein, as the cleaning lady came to each bassinet, she would pick up the baby and hug it, and kiss it, and then put it down again. And then go to the next one and pick it up, and hug it, and kiss it, and put it down again. The babies on the first floor were dying literally for lack of love. 
The body, the mind, and the spirit are intimately connected. That's why it is so absolutely in, imperative to begin to understand what's going on here today. Um, this brings us to the Gospel. Today's Gospel is Luke's version of what we heard last week from St. John. It's a little bit different because the two disciples on the road to Emmaus who had their eyes opened, when were they opened? In the breaking of the bread. When they saw Jesus break the bread, the eyes were opened and they recognized him. They rushed back to, they rushed back to the, the uh, other 12 disciples and they're telling the story. And as they're telling the story, according to St. Luke, Jesus appears. And of course, it's the same first line, the same first line that you heard last week with St. John. Shalom, peace be with you. But they are out of their wits. Why? They think they're seeing a ghost. They are terrified. And Jesus says, why are you afraid? You know, the first words always out of a divine being, whether it is a messenger from God, an angel, or whether it is a theophany of God itself, himself, says, don't be afraid. And then he, then he says to him, and this is, I find this is fascinating. It is the risen Lord. He says, touch my hands. He's showing him the nail prints, just like last week, and the side. He says, now touch me. Hold on to me. Ghosts do not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And then they're touching him. And then he's got the, the peace state resistance. He says, you got anything in the fridge? I'm hungry. And they go out and they give him a little piece of fish and he eats the fish and, and Luke is making a point of it in front of them. Bodily resurrection. Bodily, the body, the mind, and the spirit are of one piece. As a matter of fact, we're going to today, instead of saying the Nicene Creed, we're going to re do the Apostles' Creed. And the reason we're going to do the Apostles' Creed is simply because it says, I believe in the resurrection of of the body. Now, I'm going to have my body on the other side. Now, we don't know whether that happens right after we die or at the end of times. We don't know that. I do know this. I'm going to have hair. <laughs> I do know that the resurrected body is going to be pretty good. And, and I dare to believe that, that the, the body is a magnificent thing. And this is the wonder of who we are as Catholic Christians. We're a sacramental church. That means that the material world is shot through with the divine. That the material world has the divine presence all over the place. That God comes down and, and, and this idea of sacred and profane doesn't exist. Everything is sacred. Everyone is sacred. I mean, why are we a right to life church? We are a right to life church because we believe from the very beginning life is sacred. Life is holy. Our holy work is to see it in matter, in the material thing. Yeah, uh, we see the, the healing power of touch. That's a, that, that, when, when I do the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, and I always try and do that, like if you're going to go for surgery, I try to get it done before the surgery takes place, and I always invite the family around. And when I pray the prayer of the healing over them, after I pray in silence, I ask the entire family to touch them. Why? Their physical conduct, contact is a conduit of God's grace. Their physical contact is healing them. What, is, what kind of contact? It's a love contact. It's a love contact that opens. I mean, there really is this incredible connection between body, mind, and spirit. They, they really are. And, and it, goes, it goes both ways. You take, you take care of your body and your mind will be healthy. And I just heard a, a thing recently and I, I heard a, uh, a, a doctor proclaimed he really believes in the next oh, 15 to 20 years 
we're going to come to the realization, we're going to finally wake up, to, like we did with tobacco, that it really hurts the mind and the body and, and, and the brain. And they think in the next two years, about 15 or 20 years, we're going to see the same thing with alcohol, that, it, that if we take care of the mind, and the spirit will be healthy. This is an incredible connection. We, the problem is, we've been trained to be ashamed of our bodies. And we really have. And I'm afraid that the church has been sometimes at the forefront of making us have body shame. As a matter of fact, we live in a culture that wants us to be ashamed of our bodies, so we're always covering it over with all kinds of stuff to make us look like what we really don't look like. What we look like is just fine. It is the body of Christ that we celebrate. You will notice that when you come up to communion, they're not going to say, Spirit of Christ. The ministers and the deacon and I are going to be saying, this is the body of Christ. And you're going to acknowledge that the divine is in the bread. What's so amazing is that God is shot through in the material world. And I, I sometimes honestly believe that God has an easier time convincing bread that it is sacred than he has convincing us that we are sacred that the divine dwells in each and every one of us and we are to see it in each and every one of us and when we touch with love we heal I love the story of the and, and you mothers know it's true your, your little daughter comes up to you and she's bruised her hand and she says I hurt my hand, I hurt my hand she says mommy's going to make it better mommy goes mm -hmm. She spreads bacteria all over it. <laughs> and it gets better. Now, you can call that psychosomatic. And you know what? It is psychosomatic. It's the soul healing the soma. The soul healing the body. Love healing the body. That's the glory of our sacramental system. You know, you are what you eat. And we are going to be invited to eat of the bread of life. And it will make an incredible difference in us. But our holy work is to, to dare to believe that. To see the divine. You know, Gandhi once said of, of us Catholics, he said, if you Catholics really believed what you proclaim and you preach in your theology, you would be genuflecting between, before every human being you ever see because the divine is in each and every human being that we see. Now, now the thing is, is do we believe that? Do, do, do we really believe that? Now, if, if you believe that, say amen. amen. Good. Now, I want you to remind you that that even includes your crazy Uncle Leo. Let us stand. And as I said, we're going to pray the Apostles' Creed. If you don't remember, it's, it's not on the inside cover. It's on the next page inside of that. And we will together pray. Because it says, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. And when we get to that part, I want you to pay real close attention. Our body will live forever because God is shot through all of creation in all of us and so here's what we believe together i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in life everlasting. Amen.
Trusting in the power of the risen Christ, let us now bring our needs before our God. For Pope Francis and for all church leaders, may the Lord guide them in care for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, and for those who struggle with addictions. Emotional or mental illness, may God's Holy Spirit restore them to the fullness of life and health, and liberate them from all afflictions. Let us pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of Saint Peter Parish in Piper City, Saint Paul the Apostle Parish in Pioton, and the staffs in the hospitals in the diocese. That they would experience an abundance of blessings during our diocesan anniversary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this mass, for the repose of the souls of Edward and Mildred Duggan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died. May they rest in eternal peace with the, the Father in heaven, especially Matthew Popkis, Bill Coakley, and Luciana Shoot. And Shoot, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of hope, receive these prayers we offer you today, for we ask them through the risen Christ, our Lord. Beloved family of God, let us stand and pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our beloved Father.
Lord, receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit of perpetual happiness. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly is right, it's just, it's our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all to laud you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe that was cast down is now renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praises, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we and they acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed, you are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We humbly pray that as we partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, our Pastor Daniel, with the clergy, the religious, and all the beautiful Easter people you gather before you this night. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages that we may come to be co-heirs for eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May that peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Amen. My brother, peace be with you. Bless you. Bless you. Agnus Dei. Behold the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed and happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
have shared the life of God. As we walk the dusty road, sharing all our doubts and fears, someone joins us on the way, gives us hope in place of tears. In the breaking of the bread, we have come to shared the life of God. As we gather on this day, as we hear the stories told, in the story of the cross, our life's meaning have shared the life of God. Like disciples long ago, on a path by faith begun, in the joy of Easter light, we will meet the risen one. In the breaking of the bread, we have come to shared the life of God. At the banquet Jesus blessed, we remember and give praise for the gracious love of God, overflowing all our days. In the breaking of the bread, we have come to shared the life of God. Let us, as we walk the road, meet the stranger as a friend. Let us, with the risen Christ, travel still our journeys on. In the breaking of the bread, we have come to shared the life of God. As the bread of life is broken, the cup of love outpoured, we are one what God has done. As the bread of life is broken, the cup of love outpoured, we are one in Christ our Savior and sent to serve the Lord. Let us pray. We'll look with kindness upon your, your, your beloved people, Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by these eternal mysteries 
may attain in their flesh, in their body, the incorruptible glory of Christ's resurrection. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.